If I told you diabetes isn't from sweets, would you believe it? Probably not, because that's one big lie about diabetes. In this video, I'm going to bust nine total myths about diabetes. And what's number one? That's the one. Diabetes doesn't come from sweets. If you eat something sugary, you won't get diabetes. Not type 1, type 2, not even pre-diabetes. So how does diabetes happen? Type 1 is an autoimmune disease in about 5 to 10% of cases. What's that mean? Your body attacks the insulin producing cells, the beta cells, in the pancreas. So your body can't make insulin anymore. What's insulin do? It takes blood sugar and puts it into cells, into muscles. So you get, get diabetes because your body can't make insulin. And with type 2, it's insulin resistant. You got insulin sometimes too much, but it can't work. The body's resistant, so it's resisting insulin. So blood sugar levels also go up. That's why it happens. But what causes insulin resistance? Lots of stuff. The main one is obesity. That's why obesity and type 2 are so closely linked. But there's other factors too. Genetics, being lazy, even diet can play into developing type 2 diabetes. But sweets alone won't make you diabetic. But if you're already diabetic, then yes. Sweets spike your blood sugar. That's the difference. Number two, the second big lie surprised me. I see a lot of you comment about the pineapple diet. Is it true? False? It's a big lie. Well, the pineapple diet isn't for diabetes. First, no one can eat pineapple all day, every day. These really restrictive diets might work short term, but not for treating diabetes. So these miracle diets like the pineapple, lemon diets, teas, whatever, won't work by themselves for diabetes treatment. Don't fall for these false diabetes cure promises. Most times, they just want to trick you with sweet talk. They're just trying to sell some supplement or stuff claiming it's a cure, but it's not. Okay? As for pineapple diet, you guys can stop mentioning it now. Heard about the pineapple diet? Did you try it? Drop it in the comments. I'll like and pin pineapple diet comments number three. Before number three, I'll set a like goal. You guys asked for that too. It'll be 9,000 likes. One like for each lie. Each like alerts one person to these lies. Cool? Third big lie, pre-diabetes is the stage before diabetes. But hold up, you thought that was it, didn't you? Because pre-diabetes might or might not why come before type 2 diabetes. So not every pre-diabetic person will develop diabetes. A study followed people with pre-diabetes for five years, and 75% didn't get diabetes. That is, only 25% pre-diabetics became diabetic. So only one in four developed diabetes over five years. If you're pre-diabetic, don't lose heart. Many can reverse what's happening in pre-diabetes and not become diabetic. That's good news. Don't get down. Many pre-diabetics manage. I see it every day. Pre-diabetics who never develop diabetes, even getting back to normal. So that tale about being doomed to get diabetes is a big lie. It annoys me since it discourages people, hindering their progress. You know what stress does if you're all stressed out? Cortisol and adrenaline levels rise and so does blood sugar. So the less stress at this stage, the better. Number four, diabetics can't eat fruits because of fructose. This is one of the craziest lies I often hear. Why? Because what harms a diabetic isn't fructose. It's too much fructose. So there are many fruits diabetics can and should eat. They're packed with vitamins, minerals, necessary nutrients. Full of fiber, but you should go for low glycemic fruits. And also ones with a low glycemic load. What are these terms? You should know if you're diabetic. Glycemic index is how much that food will spike your blood sugar. Higher the index, worse for the diabetic. And glycemic load is as important as the index. It's the sugar or carb content in each food. Being diabetic, choose low glycemic food with little sugar, like oranges, cherries, plums, whether red or black, apples, strawberries, avocados, guava, just to mention a few. So yes, you can eat fruits, but don't gobble down kilograms of avocado. Moderation is key. Other fruits, like banana, have a higher sugar content. These fruits need more attention from you. Make sense? They're not off limits, but you'll need to limit them more. Number five, another myth. If I have no symptoms, I don't have diabetes. This I hear a lot and see online all the time. Often, with slight sugar increase, this is early stage type 2 diabetes, you won't feel any symptoms, but even a slight rise in sugar levels increases your risk of heart attack or stroke. Even if you don't show any symptoms, you could still be asymptomatic. It doesn't mean you ain't diabetic. In fact, millions of people have diabetes and they don't even know they have the disease. Diabetes typically you lose weight, get thirsty, pee often, wake up a lot at night to pee, feel tired, feel fatigued, get hungry. But these symptoms evidently only happen when your blood sugar levels are quite high. 
in the early stage of type 2 diabetes, you won't show these symptoms, okay? So get routine checkups, get your fasting blood sugar checked. Just because you don't have symptoms doesn't mean everything's fine, okay? Number six, medications speed up and worsen diabetes. Because often when you're in the early stages of type 2 diabetes, doctors start treatment. When treatment starts, many people take the meds, but don't do the important changes like lifestyle modifications, a healthier diet, starting to exercise. Then you go back for a checkup and the doctor has to increase your meds. So you think, hang on, I was on one med, now I have to take another? Because you see, you never fixed the problem, you're just treating the result. You never changed your lifestyle. And if you don't make those changes, diabetes is bound to get worse. So it's not the meds, but it's you who didn't change lifestyle. If someone says to you, I won't treat it as it'll get worse, that's total BS, okay? Don't fall for that. It's going to harm you, got it? Obviously, you won't take meds if you don't need to. I'm not saying that. Number seven, type 2 diabetes can't be reversed. That's a lie. It's not me saying this. It's the American Diabetes Association, ADA. What are the criteria for reversing type 2 diabetes? If you stop meds and still, after three months, you maintain an HbA1c lower than 6.5, that's considered reversing type 2 diabetes. Can't reverse type 1. It's an autoimmune disease. And cure or remission aren't really terms we use for diabetes. Cure applies more to something like an infection, which antibiotics can clear up. Diabetes requires constant care. It's not cured, you know. Remission, rather, implies a dormant disease. Some experts even use this, but it's really for another disease autoimmune, like hypothyroidism, a Graves disease, stuff gets better with meds, treatment puts it into remission, it's there but dormant. Diabetes is different, you reverse insulin resistance. So reversal fits better for those who control and roll back type 2 diabetes. Point 8, overdosing fiber-ridden foods for diabetics. Why is that not true? Clashes with all you heard, surprised? Well, let me explain. Check for sugar, carbs, calories along with fiber in food. Fibers alone don't make food healthy. Take oats. Seems healthy for diabetics, right? Oats have fiber. Sounds healthy. But diabetics need special attention. Why? Up to 65% of oats is sugar. Carbs, did you know? Probably not. Check out Oatmeal's nutritional info. You'll see. Is it fiber rich? Yes, but it also has high sugar and carbs. In the short run, it won't spike your blood sugar much. Compared to other sugary foods because it has fibers. But in the long run... You're overeating calories. You'll intake excess carbs and sugars. I had mentioned in a video how much I love oatmeal. I eat oatmeal a couple times a week, but I don't have diabetes. So remember when I said it's healthy? But diabetics need to be extra careful. Just because I eat it doesn't mean everyone should. It's not that simple. Check your own situation. Number nine, only the obese develop diabetes. Why is that a lie? We found that 11% of diabetics aren't obese. Other factors like genetics come into play. Some folks have genetics that favor insulin resistance. Even without obesity, they're likelier to develop diabetes. Not to mention type 1 diabetes, which isn't weight-related. It's an autoimmune disease, as I mentioned earlier. What lies have you heard? Oh, rate this video from 0 to 10. If it's 10, I'll make more like it. Also comment what city you're watching this from. Where in the world are you? I'm from Porto Alegre. Now I'm suggesting a video for you to watch. The one where I list 11 superfoods for diabetes. Which foods are good for diabetics? You'll find lots of info in this video. I'm sure you'll like it. Take care.